Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about feline leukemia. Um, so feline leukemia is one of the most infectious diseases in cats globally. It's the second leading cause of death in cats. Um, infection rates are higher, up to 30% in cats that are sick or at high risk. So high risk would be if they're nearby other infected cats or if they're running around that they might be infected by other cats. Um, so it's caused by a virus and it affects between 2 and 3 percent of cats in the U.S. It's a retrovirus and a retrovirus is an RNA virus that inserts a DNA copy of their <coughs> genome into the host cell in order to replicate. Um, so it's shed through saliva, nasal secretions, urine, feces, and milk of infected cats. Uh, it's spread by cat-to-cat -cat contact. Cat-to-cat <coughs> um, -cat transfer of the virus can occur through a bite wound, mutual grooming, um, although it's rare, it can also be through shared litter boxes and feeding dishes. Um, so they can be it can be transferred from the mother to the kittens, either before birth or after, uh, like while they're nursing, because it's uh, also in the NFL of the infected mother. <coughs> um, but it only affects cats. It cannot be transmitted to other people or other animals. The virus doesn't last long outside of the cat's body. It's probably less than a few hours. Um, male cats are more susceptible if they're unneutered because they tend to run around a little more. Um, hey, that's not very nice to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, selection and whatnot. Um, we can start a whole thing there, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's spread by cats that appear healthy, so you won't really notice if they have the symptoms or not. Um, Older cats are less likely, likely to contract the infection because resistance uh, tends to increase with their age. And then... Did I show you? It's a 6 o'clock position of the top button that advances it. Oh. And the lower one is the... Yeah. Okay. So this is how it's spread, the virus. Um, <coughs> so it's mouth and nose contact with infected saliva. Um, these are the other ways, like the litter tray is not it's rare, but it can be. Mm. Um, and then it goes to the epithelium. Epithelium cells. Yeah. And so um, it re replicates in the lymph nodes and then drains through all of that. Um, yeah. So one of the symptoms that it'll have is uh, enlarged lymph nodes because it can cause lymphoma as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, before you go on, let me do two things. Now, and some of you guys know this better than me, but um, viruses, isn't one of their claims to fame is they take over a living cell and then they instruct that cell to make virus particles? Isn't that how that works? And that's amazing how you know, a virus can do that. And the other thing is, whenever you have um, replication of any pathogen in a lymph node, also the white blood cells are multiplying, and that's really what causes the enlargement of the lymph node. So if you ever feel an enlarged lymph node on yourself, your pets, it's not always a terrible thing, but there's always some reason. There should be some reason for why that lymph node is larger than normal because it tells you that uh, activity is going on uh, greater than normal. Okay. Okay, so some signs and symptoms. Uh, loss of appetite, progressive weight loss, weakness and lethargy, uh, poor coat condition, the enlarged lymph nodes. Um, you can see there's a lot of signs and symptoms. Um, the early stages of infection, you won't really see the signs, um, so that's why they appear healthy. Uh, the cats will also have reproductive failures and abortion of kittens. There's four types of the virus, A, B, C, and T. Uh, a occurs in all infected cats. Um, it severely weakens the immune system. <coughs> B occurs in about 50%. It causes tumors and other abnormal tissue growths. C is the least common. It occurs in about 1% of cats. It causes severe anemia and strongly associated with development of erythroid hypoplasia. And then the T can affect and destroy T lymphocytes, which leads to lymphoid depletion and immunodeficiency. I was going to ask why A, B, C, and then T. Why did they skip way there? But the T is for the, the T cells. T cells, T affecting the T cells. Yeah. It's kind of like the hepatitis <laughs> virus. There's hep A, hep B, C, D. They tend to name them uh, you know, as they find them. But then sometimes there's other reasons why you skip or put another letter there. I'm just curious on that one. Um, 
Um, so there's three types of tests that are most common for diagnosing it. Uh, the ELISA, which is the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, uh, it detects the presence of the soluble uh, feline of the community virus P27 antigen in either whole blood or serum using a lateral flow test kit or a multi-well plate. Uh, the P27 is the protein component of the virus, so that's how that gets tested. Um, the ISA, <coughs> which is the immunofluorescent antibody assay, um, it detects the presence of structural core antigens in the cytoplasm of cells. They usually do that one after a positive ELISA test, and it determines if later stages of infection have been reached. Because the ELISA test won't always tell you if it's the later stages or the beginning, or might not even show up. Um, but you can also use the peripher peripheral blood smears or bone marrow or other tissues for the IFA. Um, the PCR helps determine if the virus has infected the bone marrow as well. Um, you can test it on whole blood, the bone marrow, and other tissues, and it can detect regressive infections. So, and then the chart on the side just kind of shows you. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you make that one? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, pretty impressive. <laughs> I wish I was that yeah. talented. But yeah, so it shows you if you have a positive, you just follow the arrows. There's a certain them. protocol you have. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then treatment and prognosis. There's no curative treatment that cur currently exists for the retroviral infection. 85% um, of cats persistently infected with the virus <coughs> die within about three years of the diagnosis. Um, feline positive cats can live without major disease complications for years with routine care. Uh, the infected cats don't need the vaccination because there's no proven benefit to having a vaccination if they're already infected. Um, you make sure to routinely bring the pet in for tests since there's opportunities <coughs> if infections are a concern for the animal's weakened immune system. Um, the average survival after diagnosis is around two and a half years, um, but the progression of disease is more rapid in kittens as, because the resistance is increased as they get older. So, and then this one is an example of a vaccine. This one uses a modified live virus, so the other one that I have on the next slide has a killed virus, so I guess it doesn't really, they don't have to be a specific one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, the thing is, when you have a modified live virus, that's always a little dangerous because hopefully it's modified the right way and gets into how they make vaccines. Like I think the <laughs> rabies virus, if you get an uh, injection of it or any animals, I think they always use killed vaccines because it's so risky. Because there's been cases where they've had a vaccine and they didn't modify the virus right and it got shipped out. And I should maybe maybe Wednesday or next week or after we Thanksgiving and talk about that. They've actually had cases where it wasn't modified right, let's say disease X vaccine, and then it got shipped out. And as the people were vaccinating animals, they were coming up with the disease because they were actually injecting the live virus. <coughs> I should I should find that to show you. So it's always a little risky. So I think the rabies thing is always killed. But I'm not positive on that. But it's kind of interesting how they make, make vaccines. You know, there's mistakes that are made. And I know, I can't remember what disease. I think it was, I want to say IBR in cattle, but years ago. But they shipped it out, and it was actually like shipping out the disease and injecting the disease. Because you can't tell on a vaccine if it's modified, live, killed, or if it's even good, right? So, anyway. Um, okay, so protecting your feline. Uh, relatively effective vaccine against the virus, um, the AAFP, or the American Association of Feline Practitioners, has a feline retrovirus management guidelines, and they recommend using a two-dose vaccine for kittens, and then having a booster after one year, and then every so often, <coughs> um, Vaccines have been associated with development of sarcomas at the vaccination site, and the vaccines are not actually proven to be 100% effective, so you should always take other precautions to keep keeping them indoors and separated from other cats that may be infected. So now if you have like a, a positive cat in your house, it could give it to the other another cat that's negative, right? It could. This this one. Because, you know, so, what is it? It's the, uh, <coughs> the uh, there's another ca cat virus that it really doesn't spread easily between cats. What's the other one that's kind of prominent? Not FIV. FIV is what I'm thinking about. I think you can have an FIV cat, and if you're careful, it doesn't spread to another FIV cat. 
somebody taught me that a while ago. But if you have these kind of cats, all your cats should be positive because they're going to be sooner or later positive, right? Because this is, remember how you said it's spread in the litter box or saliva and all that. It's easily passed from cat to cat. Okay, and the interesting thing is, yeah, American Association of Feline Practitioners, they would know better than anybody, right? And sarcomas are often, and that'd be another thing we could talk about, are caused not by the antigen itself, but what's the vaccine, what's most of the fluid in the vaccine called? It's an A word. Adjuvant. 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 <laughs> Sometimes the adjuvants cause these reactions in cats, and some people are very, I've seen online where somebody said, so-and-so killed my cat. You know, they named a company because their cat <laughs> died of this. Um, and it's thought to be the adjuvant that's in the vaccine because vaccines are kind of nasty because they're supposed to promote an immune response. And so they're supposed to kind of gather immune cells. But some of the stuff that's in the adjuvant, I think, has been linked to sarcomas. And I don't think it's, anybody know that it's, ha I don't think it happens in dogs, does it? Anybody ever seen that? I see it in cats. Cats, yeah. Yeah, it's well known in cats. But I don't think the dogs, dogs can react to vaccines, but not, you know, developing a sarcoma at the site of injection. That's very interesting. Yeah, and so this is a killed vac virus. Yeah. The other one was multivalent. Do you know what that means? Multivalent vaccine? More than one antigen in there. Because did you notice the, there, I think there were three organisms, I think, in that other one. Was it, this is monovalent. One antigen. So, yeah. Ah. Okay, so, I was just going to say, because I'm, I'm ending it, but um, when my brother and I were little, we begged our mom and dad to adopt the stray that we found. Uh, we didn't know that she was pregnant. Uh, <laughs> and in our area, a lot of the cats that were running around were infected with the feline leukemia virus. So, my mom knew that she most likely had it, and she did. So, she was positive, but her litter of kittens somehow did not get it. And they are currently, they're going to turn 16 in March. So wow. Safe to say they're... The litter you're saying, 16. Now, how do you keep track? How do you keep track of a cat for 16 years? The we, litter. We have them still. You have them all? Yeah. How many were in the litter? Well, okay, so it was four in the litter. Four. Um, my grandma adopted one, but okay. he had kidney issues. Okay. But, yeah, the, we had the other three. You have the other three still, 16. Yes. Wow, that's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, not every, it's like a textbook. Some cats don't read the textbook where the, the fetuses can get the virus and the virus won't pass. Or maybe mom's good enough at fighting them that the, the, the fetuses aren't exposed to the virus. Very interesting case history, though. 16 years. Uh, questions, comments? Okay, we'll see you Wednesday. We'll have... Lauren, is that pronouncing that right? Lauren? Lauren, yeah. Lauren, because you're spelling. It's just what we all want. I know the spelling is like, what? How do I say this? And then Shadow, hopefully, will come back. But if it's a hassle, Jacob, you know, pass. But anyway. Excellent. Do you have a flash drive or anything, Lauren? Uh, I can borrow one from somebody. No, no, no. I mean. Oh, no. I, just, I, I don't want you to leave one. Okay. okay. Uh, that's oh, okay. That's right. Thanks. <laughs>